This is a video just to explain everything you need to know about joining our live first sessions with Try Training Harder. You'll need a few apps. First one we can talk about is the Zwift companion app. Obviously download it from the App Store Android Store as appropriate. So if we open up the Zwift companion app here, you'll see a few different sections. We've got activities, events and goals. This is where you can sign up for events, check out what activities your friends are doing, set yourself some goals. And then if we open up by clicking more on the bottom right hand corner and look for find Zwifters in the menu here, we are going to first of all look for all the TTH coaches. You'll find them by searching for TTH hyphen C, C, Diego, Tracy, Alan, etc. Coming up there. You want to make sure you're following all of those coaches because the coaches take it in turns to run our live Zwift sessions. So if you follow them, they'll see your following them and be able to invite you to the sessions as long as you have changed your name within Zwift to have TTH in your title. So if we go back to the menu, click on profile, then you can go and edit your profile here. You can see I'm just going to change mine to John Riley TTH, put the TTH in brackets to make it look a bit tidier. And then those coaches, when they're running the sessions, they can send out a notification. You can see I've got a notification here in the app from Kevin, inviting me to a meetup on Wednesday, 30th of June at 6.55 in the morning. So I can either say going or not going. If I click going, it'll turn a green tick. I can check out the course we're going to be on. You can see who else is going, list of names there, who hasn't quite decided yet, and then a bit more detail on the session. So you can see that this one is going to be hill reps, so there's not going to be a workout to load. And obviously I'll look into Training Peaks as well, that's going to have a lot of detail on the session. So if the Training Peaks session is in having a workout, then we need to make sure that our Training Peaks and Zwift accounts are connected. So I've gone to Zwift.com here, just need to make my way to my profile. So you'll be clicking on my face or the My Profile button on the right there. Here you can edit your weight and height and things if you need to, you can also do that within the companion app. But here we're looking for the connections button. So if we click on connections, this is where you can link up all the different apps and software. So if you want to connect it to your Strava, then you can obviously do that here. So these Zwift rides show up in your Strava feed. But the main one we need is Training Peaks. We want that to be connected. So you'll just click the connect button, log into Training Peaks, and then that will obviously send your Zwift workouts back to Training Peaks so that your coach can see that what you've been doing. And then Training Peaks can send the workouts across to Zwift. You can also log into Zwift Power as well if you want to uh, do some Zwift races. That's where most of the race data gets stored. So if we load up Zwift then, We've now accepted our meetup invitation. We've got Training Peaks linked up. So when we open up Swift at the relevant time, let's say we're doing the five to seven session, we should get this little banner coming up within about 10 minutes of the session starting. So you either click let's go there, or if you're a little bit early, then it might say join meetup just on the left hand side. So you can click either of those. Now you can see we are in the meetup. So this meetup that I've set up here, looks like we've got three minutes roughly until the session starts. So that's enough time just to get the workout loaded. So obviously checking training peaks first, there may not be a workout, but nine times out of 10 there usually is. So we need to go open up the menu and a couple of buttons on the right hand side. We're looking for the top one there where it says workouts. So we click on that one. This works the same both on iPad and laptop. You get all the built-in Zwift workouts here, but the one we're looking for is Training Peaks Custom Workouts. So if we open up that one, I can see that session 66 is today's session. We've got VO2 max intervals today. So I've clicked that, load it up, and then you can see the workout loads up on the left-hand side. And all the relevant steps of the workout are there. Looks good. If you want to tweak anything within the workout, then we can bring up the menu bar at the bottom. And that lets us skip through or change intensity. So if I want to change intensity up or down, I can change it by 10% either way. So your particular coach might want you to hit slightly higher intensity than what's programmed to Training Peak, so you could change that. 
or the other way around if you're looking for more of a recovery session and you can tone it down a little bit to tailor it to you but most of the time it should be set pretty much bang on for where you need it to be if you're running late or you can't quite get synced up with everyone else then you can use the skip button on this bar as well just to skip through to catch up with everyone on the live session and if you lose communication at any stage you could just send a quick message through Zwift here uh, using the group text Now, if for some reason your training peaks and Zwift aren't talking to each other, there is a manual way to bring across the workouts from training peaks to Zwift. So if you go into training peaks, open up the workout we need, and then click on this export workout file button. And we would then want to select this .zwo format. Download that to your computer. You're going to have to do this on a laptop rather than an iPad. We then need to find the Zwift folder on our computer, it's normally found within Documents. So if we go Documents, Zwift, look for the Workouts folder within Zwift. And then this number here is your unique Zwift ID, they should match up. So click on the long number. Anything you drag into this folder now will magically appear in Zwift. So I'm going to drag that file we just downloaded across. And then you're going to have to reboot Swift, so shut it down, start it back up again uh, on any of your devices. So we'll get back into Swift, and then magically there it is. The workout has appeared in the custom workouts folder now rather than the training peaks one. The training peaks one is where they go across automatically. Anything you put across manually will turn up in that custom workout folder. You can see you can just load it in exactly the same way, and it is good to go. Now, the final thing we're going to go through is the way we communicate in our live sessions. We use an app called Discord. This is purple app at the bottom of the screen. Download that from your relevant stores again. You also need to use our Zwift channel. You need to join that. There's a link within the blog attached to this video. Or just contact your coach. He'll let you know what the, uh, the channel code is. So once you've opened it up, we've got a text channel and a voice channel. So the text channel you can use for asking any questions around Zwift. Uh, we have a little bit of chat on there through the sessions. If anyone, again, loses their microphone, batteries die, etc., just give us a shout on there and the coach will see that message as when we're riding. The main function of the Discord is to chat via voice. So you need some headphones for this during the session. But before the session starts, just click on the little Try Training Harder with the speaker next to it, then click Join Voice. And you'll come into this voice section, so you'll hear the coach and whoever else is on the session. All their logos will pop up there. In the settings, you can turn noise pressure on and off and change the sensitivity up and down. If you get a lot of wind noise coming through, uh, that can be sometimes because your sensitivity is a little bit low. So tweak that down. You and you can also use the video function. We sometimes use this just to demonstrate some drills or just check out people's posture on the bikes, etc. So that can be really useful. But most of the time we'll just be using the voice channel. And it's generally good practice to stay on mute unless the coach is asking you a question. Just for the harder intervals, just in case everyone's working a bit hard. We want to hear everyone breathing down the mics at the same time. But yeah, if you need to answer, ask any questions, just unmute yourself and shout. And the coach will be pleased to answer. Hope that helps. I look forward to seeing you in the Zwift live session soon. Thank you very much.